that escalated quickly. Oh, your neighbors must love you. Yeah, not so much. Good morning and welcome back, Wackadoo fam. Got some updates for you. So where we last left off, we had dropped the motor in place, got it onto the motor mounts, and what we had realized after we reviewed some of the footage is that the motor actually had a little bit of a roll to the passenger side, which isn't all bad. So what we ended up doing was we took everything loose on the body mounts and on the motor mounts themselves, took everything loose, preloaded the motor back over where we wanted it, and then tightened everything back up, let it loose, and it actually sat a little bit better in the engine compartment. It still has a little bit of roll to it, but that's not a problem because we're gonna have all of the turbo weight, all the exhaust weight and everything off of the other side, and we're probably gonna lighten this side with the Skunk 2 manifold. So, not too big of a deal, not too worried about it. It's like I said, less than a degree, and we were able to verify that on the transmission using the digital angle finder, so up underneath, Found a nice flat spot, re-zeroed it based off the chassis, and it is at less than half a degree of roll in the transmission as well as in the motor. So all of that should shift over a little bit. Uh, so today what we're looking at is mocking up a transmission mount, at least trying to get that designed. I'm gonna measure the drive shaft out because this is a two-piece uh, drive line setup, and I'll show you guys that up underneath the car. That way you can kind of get an understanding of what we're looking at. Uh, and now we have to go from Miata to Opal. So shouldn't be too bad. We've got a great drive line shop right down the way. Shouldn't be an issue, but got to get that measured up so that I can get that ordered. We can get that off to them and they can start making that because it's probably going to be a lead time. So want to get a couple things buttoned up. I'm solo in the garage for now. Uh, D will be home later. So we'll get to it, see what we can get done. All right. All right, guys, so here's what we're thinking. Obviously, you guys saw what we did with the motor mount. So the transmission mount, we're going to have to do something similar. Uh, unfortunately, the existing Miata subframe, there's, there's no use for it at all. But there are holes in the transmission where these big, long bolts from the Miata actually were used. We're going to utilize that for our transmission mount. So what I've done, so I went ahead and flattened off one side. This is going to be our body mount section. And what we're going to have to do, looking at it, try to imagine you're looking at the side of the car we're actually going to have to come down and then go across because the transmission sits lower than what the existing one did so we're going to make a relief cut here bend that down so we have an angle coming down we'll make another relief cut in here so we can flatten that back out we'll get those welded up so it can come across the trans and on either side of this we're going to use those existing uh, miata holes for the transmission mount we're going to weld some tabs to the side of this with some gussets to give it that extra strength. And then we'll do the similar thing on this side where we actually come back up and then flatten back out for the body mount itself. This is sitting at 24 inches. We actually need about 18 from flat to flat for the body mount itself. But I want to give myself a little bit of extra room. That way I can trim off the fat on the end, make it flat, and then we can get it mounted up. The infamous D over there putting a burrito in his mouth as it's dinner time on a Monday night. So I've uh, got a little bit of stuff done over the weekend, but Monday night, I think it's time we get a little more organized. What do you say, D? Workflow. Workflow, baby. So got a little whiteboard over there. We're going to start getting things written down, get a little more organized, get some flow into this thing, make sure we have everything we need listed out. You can see that obviously we got our list made up and we got it broken down into three categories for now. Uh, things that need to be purchased that we already know are going to become a problem later because either they've gone missing or we threw them out because we need to do something else. Uh, fabrication and then labor. Uh, the breakdown between fabrication and labor that we have on the list is more or less that we already know that everything that needs to be fabbed is going to be labor. However, there are parts that we already have that are going to need to be installed or things that we've decided we're gonna make and then need to be installed. But those are gonna be things that are, are mostly labor intensive, not just fabrication. Uh, otherwise the entire list would just be fab. Uh, I think the keys are a cooling system, a trans mount, and... The exhaust header. Cause exhaust. we've already started with the transmission mount, got something mocked up. We need to finalize that, get that in the car and bolt it in place and then once that's done 
then yeah, we really need to start looking at the header. We have the, the federal 49 state header that's going to turn into our turbo manifold. Flip it around uh, gonna, and it'll come out the top. re flange it, flip it around. Once that's mounted, then that'll give us some room to mess around with the cooling system, the radiator, the intercooler, all that plumbing and mounting. So it all starts to trickle down from that point. Now, something to keep in mind is there's a difference between budget-oriented build and being outright cheap. In this case, we were going to try and use the radiator that was from the Mazda because we knew that it was going to be the right size for the application and that it, it would do the job effectively, uh, particularly since it won't have nearly as much air restriction as it does in a Miata. However, the frame rails in the Opal are much narrower than we anticipated. And we're talking about six inches too wide between the Opal front end and the width of the radiator for the Miata. So yep. we're probably gonna end up doing a, a big aluminum radiator for a Honda, something a little bit more narrow that we can fit down in there without having to cut the car up too much because we don't wanna lose all of our rigidity by hacking it all to pieces to slip in a radiator. Um, so that that's gonna be one of those things where, yeah, we can make it work with what we have if we were dedicated to the idea of saving every dollar. But there's gonna be some of these things on the list where it's easier to buy it than it is to try and make it or make something work. For now, we're gonna work on that transmission mount. He's already got something mocked up. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward with that and try to get something welded tonight so we can pull that down, clean it up, and, and cross that off the list. All right, what'd you build while I was at work? <laughs> well, Sort of the long is the Opal transmission crossmember poofed into thin air sometime while we were working on this, so we had to fab one up. Uh, but what we did end up coming up with was this. It's inch and a half uh, round steel tube that we had left over, flattened out to actually mount to the bottom of the Opal body. And we created a tab, an offset tab. It's actually where the OE Miata PPF bolts mount into. That's going to actually keep our transmission pushed over and preloaded into the right position for us to have a nice straight stub shaft going from the trans to the carrier bearing for the opal side. Um, and it puts the trans and the, uh, the drive shaft right at about two and a half, three degrees, uh, right where we want it to be. So should all work out pretty fine and dandy. Just got to finish welding it up and making it pretty. And, uh, and then we've got probably an yeah. eighth inch between oh, the bar yes. and the bottom of the transmission yeah. so that we can put a, uh, a polyurethane as washer it, between as them. As it sits, the, the tab is actually just a touch higher, just a sconch higher than the bar itself. And where we have welded, like you said, is about an eighth, so we'll have room for a polyurethane bushing to go in there so it's not metal on metal. We'll have a little bit of give to it. What do you think, D? How's it look? Looks solid. And it's solid. It's ugly, but it's solid. Uh, it's definitely welded all the way through and through, nice and stiff. We're not looking for a beauty contest here, boys and girls. This is, uh, we're looking for solid, and that's exactly what this is. So, and roll it over. Yeah. It. Oh, yeah. We added a little gusset to the side. After we got the tab welded in solid, we added the gusset to the side just to give it a little bit more stability. There was plenty of weld here all the way around, but with it being kind of off set just a little bit, we wanted to make sure it had a little bit of structure to it. So all things considered, she's ready. So we're going to get this thing mounted back in place and get the transmission mounted to it and loaded where it actually needs to be so we can measure a drive shaft and see what else we can get into. So there is our transmission cross member. That's the her. motor and tranny are hanging in the car under their own weight right now. Yep. So what we ended up doing, like I said before, when we were out of the car, there's two bolt holes here, which mount the Miata PPF, which is a full chassis length uh, truss, essentially, that mounts everything front to rear, solid to the chassis. So we utilized one of the existing Miata bolts, ran that back through. We've got it spaced out for our polyurethane washer that we're gonna have here. Uh, we've got a lock washer on top and we're using aircraft grade stainless uh, safety wire. We actually drill the hole through the top of the bolt. Uh, because we're only using one of the bolt holes, we want to make sure this doesn't back out, doesn't have a chance to. So we're lock washering up top and we're going to safety tie wire this to the transmission so it doesn't spin out. 
Uh, but other than that, I mean, she's set. We're mounted in front. We're mounted here. This will give us a chance to measure our stub shaft to the carrier bearing and then uh, get that fabricated, move on to greener pastures like uh, radiator and turbo and all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, so something that we wanted to show you here was the cross member from the last episode and where it sits and kind of where we're going to be at with ground clearance in respect to the pan and whether or not it's worth it to have that bar there. So what do we got there, Cody? So fun fact, ground clearance from bottom of bar, about two and a half inches. We only have about four inches clearance to the bottom of the pan. Now this is on caster, so it might be a little hard to see that, but realistically you're talking about there, ground clearance from pan, not cross member to ground. So it's not a lot. And at the end of the day, we'd rather hit the cross member. This is big, thick, heavy wall tubing. We'd rather hit that than the pan any day because I don't want to start going through oil pans. Better to hit the, the bar a thousand times yep. than the pan once. Alternatively, while the two and a half inches of ground clearance to the bar seems like a completely unmanageable and impossible thing to deal with, oh my God, you're gonna be hitting it all the time. Yes, pretty much every speed bump in every driveway is gonna be an opportunity to make a little bit of grinding noise, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, my 68, which is here, actually has the exact same amount of ground clearance to the exhaust which is actually further back so it hangs in an even more precarious position so we know exactly how often he's going to touch it and frankly it's going to be well worth it so we're not too worried about it so for those that are worried it'll be fine i promise Okie dokie wackadoo racing channel. It's Tuesday now. So today's project we're going to try and get the uh, original OEM Mazda 49 state manifold cut off, shortened, flipped over, and mounted on the car. So that's going to look something like this guy. We're going to take off all these little tabs and heat shroud provisions. This flange is gonna go, we got a T28 flange coming that we're gonna replace this with. Once we figure out where it needs to go, I'm gonna take this heat shield off and then knock it an inch or so out of here. So, uh, not much to do but to do it. So I'm just gonna start cutting things. We start by applying a little bit of heat with the torch and liquid wrench to loosen up any of the bolts that were left in the manifold followed by cutting off any of the heat shield brackets so that we can go ahead and smooth those up and prep it for headers wrap. And then you see me lay down a one inch piece of material across the flange to use as a guide to make a nice straight cut with the sawzall, followed by dropping down and cutting the remainder of the tubes off of the flange itself. And then we flip the header upside down from its original orientation and drop it back down on the flange, now one inch shorter and upside down. How are we looking, buddy? So here we are. This is welded. We already kind of mocked it up on the car and it looks like we're gonna to have to massage the car a little bit, but we did take an inch out. So that's at least an inch that we bought ourselves by bringing it all in closer to the flange and inverting it. So now what I gotta do, that now that the outside is all welded, is we're gonna turn around on the inside. Now, as well as the welds that I just put in, uh, they were already welded from the inside from Mazda factory which takes away from the total inside diameter of the actual runners and it, uh, it actually restricts airflow. So we're gonna go back in with a high speed carbide and we're gonna clear all that extra weld out that doesn't need to be there from both what I just did and factory and try to maximize how much volumetric efficiency can go through these tubes. Uh, then we're gonna check it with a pen light and see if we have any pinholes. If we do, we'll fix that now and then we'll clean it all up and try and get it on the car. And there you have it. So now she's all welded up. I turned the lights off and I shone a pen light at these ports and then looked at them from the inside and then flipped it over and shown them from the outside in to look for any pinholes. And there are no pinholes. You can see that I actually went in and it's difficult to see with the, where the light is. But I went in and opened all these up and cleared out wherever there was a bunch of extra weldment. Uh, this 
little bit right here was where the uh, the old EGR used to be, but shouldn't change anything. And we'll see if we can get it mocked up. Okay, Cody's over here currently taking a stab at cutting out part of the footwell. Right there. So we're gonna try and remove this section to get us a little bit more room. And we'll show you guys when we get that out. Got a little update now that D got done doing all of the hard work and me just looking pretty. She's officially mounted. Got a couple bolts in her. Had to do a little clearancing like he'd said right here into the firewall right at the driver's side foot well. It's typical, you Opal guys will know that. Anybody that's done a motor swap has had to clearance that out a little bit. Not a big deal, it's just sheet steel and there's plenty of room for uh, pedals and everything else that needs to go in there. And then with the cuts that we did make to actually bring it in tighter so that we could clear that, we also had to do some clearance in here because it's super tight. But as it sits, there's room for a gasket. It's got clearance all the way around. And uh, enough room for headers wrap. Enough room for headers wrap. So all in all, I think we're sitting pretty decent with where that's at. We've got turbo flange coming in tomorrow along with some other goodies. So to get an idea of reference as to where we're sitting in proximity to the hood, we got a, a string pulled across both fender wells. You can see we come right up to the edge of our cut right here at the moment. And on the back side, coming right down about where the collector is. So I think what we're gonna end up doing is to give the turbo a little bit of rake. I think we're gonna end up cutting from here straight to that weld and then putting our flange right there. So that's what we ended up with. So there's our slash cut where our flange is gonna end up. And then we've got our bracket that comes down to the engine mount point. You can see we ended up clearancing it a little bit on the inside for one of the nuts. For that. On the back side. Right there. But all of that will get covered up with headers wrap and we'll never see any of that and a little bit nope. of black paint. Just throw it on. What do you think? Let's mount it. I think yeah. After looking at the height of it and how obnoxious it was going to be straight up, we decided we're going to camp the turbo at 45 degrees. So we're going to get the flange in tomorrow and then we can go ahead and start making the offset between our header flange and where the turbo flange is going to go. It'll actually end up giving us a better angle for our inlet piping and it'll actually give us a little bit better of a shot at getting the exhaust out and down to where it needs to go to go out the back so it'll end up working out better in the long run across the board uh, it's just gonna be a little bit more fab on this uh, turbo manifold this is what it is no biggie we'll get it but I think that's it for tonight all right guys, we're able to make the cap for the exhaust manifold, turbo manifold, and it looks pretty good. So let's take a look. So that's gonna be it right there. Right where it's supposed to go. You can see we got, if there is discussion about a different hood uh, with some body lines in it, which might change where this sits, but we went with, if the hood was perfectly flat, we just, threw some string across here to get an idea of what it would look like and how much exposure there would actually be and how much of the hood we'd be cutting up to expose the turbo and let it sit out of the hood. So really not that bad. It'll look pretty slick. I'm feeling pretty good about it. It's not going anywhere. That is it. It's not changing. So for all of you who say you can't do a BP turbo swap in an Opal, you're wrong. It's, you just have to be willing to be obnoxious. So we're gonna we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do on the exhaust side and where that's going, and probably reclock a little bit so we can put our charge pipe down. And then uh, tomorrow, the radiator should be here. Let me mock that up. Yep. However, that is the end of this video because I still have to edit it. So we will resume filming tomorrow so we can try and get the radiator mocked up. But for right now. I think that's it. Yep. Wagadoo out.